around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Anastasia, my darling, say you will be mine. No, Charles, I can never marry you. Uh, but why? I have wealth, position, a new 57 car. That's just why I won't marry you, Charles. Your 57 car is so old-fashioned and boxy-looking. It's been outmoded by the 57 swept-wing Dodge. Oh, but Anastasia... I got such a bargain deal on that car. Oh, Charles, there's no such thing as a bargain on a 57 car that isn't really new. Oh, but Anastasia. Has your car got torsion air ride? Oh, no. Twin set headlights? Oh, no. Swept wing styling? Oh, no, only Dodge has all that. Well, you paid for a new car, but you didn't get one. Oh, marry me anyway. Not until you get a new Dodge. I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, Charles, adjust your wig. Shall we dance, darling? Yes, turn on Lawrence Welk. Hello, Chester. Oh, come on in, Doc. <sighs> Where's Matt? He ain't here. Eh? He's not. Mm -mm. Where have you two been the last couple of days? I haven't seen either one of you. Well, I just got back from Hayes City. Mr. Dillon sent me over there to fetch some government papers. And you know what, Doc? I took the Santa Fe both ways. You did? Well, that beats riding a horse, huh? <laughs> Where's Matt, you say? Well, he left a note here, but he didn't say exactly where he's at. You mean he's out of town? That's what the note says. Seems somebody told him where he could find Jack Brand. Jack? Jack Brand? That's right. Mr. Dillon says Brand's got three of his gang with him. You mean Matt's gone out there alone after four men? Well, now, if I knew where he was, I'd go help him, Doc. I, I know, but there's nothing you can do about it, Chester. Worries me, though. Doggone if it hey, don't. Chester! Ah. Chester! Well, there's Mr. Dillon, Doc. Where is he? Well, there he is. Sitting on that wagon. Oh. Who's that with him? Oh, some fella gave him a ride, I guess. Hello, Mr. Dillon. Hello, Chester. Doc. Matt, you lose your horse? No, I left him out at Barr's ranch and borrowed this wagon. One of his riders will bring him in tomorrow. Who's this with you? You've seen his picture, Chester. What? Where's Jack Brand? Let's get on, Brand. You first. Go. How come you'd let him drive the wagon, Mr. Dillon? To keep his hands full, Chester. Here, take my shotgun. Lock him up. Yes, sir. Where's the others? I thought he had three men with him. Well, go on, tell him, Marshal. Tell him where they are. And the wagon under that canvas. Oh. Are they all dead, Matt? All three of them? Yeah, they're all dead, Doc. Bloodiest Marshal I ever seen. That's just a wagon load of meat. That's enough, him. Right? It ain't hardly enough. I never seen such a killing. What happened, Mr. Dillon? Uh, they put up a fight, and I had to take them. So that's all. Your lawman here hid himself in the grass and just waited for us to come out of that cabin. And then he yelled. So naturally, we headed for cover. Who wouldn't? And he just laid there, and he cut loose of that shotgun. 
store up two of the boys that way. Then he stood up and cut down Hank Smith with a six-shooter. How come you got out of it, Brian? I jumped back in the cabin and I give up. You blame me? I suppose you're trying to say that you wouldn't have shot him. Sure, we tried to shoot him. Any man got a right to defend himself. I never heard of resisting arrest called self-defense. I never heard of no marshal shooting down everybody on the landscape. Lock him up, Chester. Get going, Brian. I think he was killing a hog, not a man. Bloodiest marshal I ever seen. Shut up and keep walking. Oh, man, see, you were mighty lucky. Taking on four outlaws that way. Yeah. And you kill three. <laughs> Say, where till people hear about this? Uh, Brand's right, Doc. It's a lot of killing. An awful lot. Oh, now, I don't get to thinking about it too much, Matt. It's your job. You did it, and so it's over. It's over, huh? And wait till tomorrow or the next day there'll be somebody else. And there's always another man to kill. Oh, no, Matt, I never heard of you shooting anybody you didn't have to. No, I never did. But sometimes that doesn't help much. Say, you, uh, you look tired, man. Well, I haven't slept since I rode out of here two days ago. Yeah, now you're going to get some rest. Then you'll feel better. Yeah, sure enough. Hey, Brian, it's not in jail, what you doing? He don't like it much, but I told him not to try kicking his way out that I'd be sleeping in the office. We'll both be sleeping in the office, Chester. I'm too tired to walk to my room. Oh, uh, take care of this wagon and the... Oh, what's in it, will you? Yes, sir. You and Doc can identify those men. We'll write it on paper in the morning, huh? All right, sir. Well, I I'll be coming to bed about midnight, but I'll be real quiet. Yeah, nothing can wake me, Chester. Not tonight. Thorough relief. Thorough relief. Take Haley's M.O. for thorough relief. Haley's M.O. is far different from ordinary laxatives, which act only in the lower intestinal tract. They give only half the relief you need, for they do nothing for the acid upset which usually accompanies irregularity. But Haley's M.O., the best laxative ever made, acts in two places instead of only one. First, in your stomach, it relieves acidity. And second, where other preparations act, it relieves irregularity. That's because Haley's M.O. combines the two most widely approved and time-tested ingredients known. And by giving you thorough relief, it makes you feel better, infinitely better than any ordinary preparation. What's more, Haley's M.O. is so gentle, it's recommended even for surgical patients. And hear this. Now, in addition to the popular standard form, you can get Haley's M.O. in the new flavored form, which is making a hit everywhere, especially with youngsters. So buy Haley's M.O. Look for the big letters M-O on the package. And whether you use the plain or flavored form, remember, take Haley's M.O. for thorough relief. <laughs> Don't, don't go for my what? No, look, do it, I tell you. Leave the gun alone. Yeah, Leave, it. Leave it. Don't make me kill you. Don't make me kill another man. No, no, don't. Wake no. up. No. I'm spilling up blood. I don't want to kill Mr. you. Mr. No, Dillon, no, wake up. No, no, no. It's just me, Mr. Dillon. It's Chester. There ain't nobody here. Uh, you, you was asleep. You have been dreaming. Oh. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, here, let me light the lamp. No, 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 don't, don't do that, Chester. It's all right. My gracious, I come in and heard you talking, and I thought, sure, somebody was here. The moonlight ain't so bright, and I, I, I couldn't see good at first. Yeah, sure. My, I had to yell at you a couple times before you woke up. You was dreaming you was in a fight, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that's what I was dreaming. Nightmares like that, they're just terrible, ain't they? Uh, what time is it? Well, it's a little past midnight. Is Jack Brown awake? No, oh, he'd be bellering if he was. Oh, but, Mr. Dillon, now that you're awake, there's something I ought to tell you. 
Oh, what? Well, me and Doc was having a drink over at Long Branch, and a fella came in there and started talking real loud, you talking know. Talking about what? Well, sir, mostly about how he's a friend of Jack Brand's, and he heard about how you caught him and all. What's his name, Chester? Stanger. Joe Stanger. Oh, yeah, I know him. Do you think he will cause trouble? Yeah, probably. And I'm not going to worry about him tonight. Oh, no, sir. That's what me and Doc figured. He won't try nothing tonight. All the same, keep your gun handy, Chester. Now, let's try to get some sleep, huh? Chester, it's hardly dawn. I can throw a bucket of water on him. Will you shut up, Brand? I'm coming. Well, it's about time. Cut out that cussed young Brand. What's the matter? Come on over here and unlock his cage, Chester. What? what? I've got a gun on you. Can't what? you see it? Where'd you get that gun? Come over here, I see. Well, the keys ain't over there. They're, they're hanging on the wall down here. I'll get them. Well, don't you take your own sweet time about it. I've been in this chicken coop long enough. All right, drop it, Brand. What? Oh, you... My hand. You're not hurt. I hit the gun. I got the keys, Mr. Dillon. I'll oh. get his gun out of there. All right, go ahead. Oh, my hand. Now stand back, Brian. Well, you like to bust stand my Stand back, I said. You're lucky. Yeah, lucky you didn't kill me, I suppose. Just like you kill everybody. You shut up. I got it, Mr. Dillon. Ain't no good anyway. Not now. Where'd you get this gun, Brent? I made it, Marshal. Now, don't be smart. Oh. Wait a minute. Joe Stanger brought it to you. He tossed it to you right through those bars on the wall. I didn't, didn't even he? know Stanger was in town. Didn't you? Chester, got some boards and nail them over the window so nothing can get through. Oh, now, wait, Marshal. That's the only window in here. You can't board that up. You'll get enough air. Oh, no. When you get it fixed, Chester, we'll go to breakfast. <laughs> I declare, it's, it's been some time since I've been out on the plaza this early in the morning, Mr. Dillon. Weren't you up gambling all night last Saturday, Chester? Oh, well, that's different. Things don't look the same when you've had a good night's sleep. No. You didn't have no more nightmares last night, did you? No, I didn't sleep very well. You ought to take some time off. Go out buffalo hunting or something, Mr. Dillon. Maybe I ought to take a lot of time off. Now, wait a minute. What? That's Joe Stanger coming there. Yeah, see, by golly, it is. What's he doing up, Surly? Maybe he wants to find out why Jack Brand hasn't shot his way out of jail yet. Mm, well, he won't be throwing Brand no more guns. Not the way I got that place boarded up now. Chester, step out of the way, will you? Yes, sir. Marshal, you're up kind of early, aren't you, Stanger? Train leaves for Abilene in about an hour. Oh, you going to Abilene? I'll be back next week. Jack Brand will still be in jail. Yeah, I heard you caught him. He's a good friend of yours, isn't he? Sure. But I ain't part of his gang. I never was. Yeah, I know. Of course, there ain't much gang left now. No. You're a pretty rough man, Marshal. That's when I have to be. Don't it ever bother you, killing people the way you do? Look, Stanger, I shot a gun out of Jack Brand's hand this morning. You come by the office later and I'll give it back to you, huh? Now, what would I want if it was smashed up six shooters? It's yours, isn't it? Where in mine? I ought to throw you in jail, too. I wouldn't go to jail, Marshal. Not without a fight, I wouldn't. I ain't afraid of you. 
You want to try? Go ahead. Go on. Go ahead. Draw. No. That's the matter, Marshal. I thought you liked killing men. What's holding you back? You're going to have to fight me sooner or later. Get out of here, Stanger. Go get on your train. <laughs> Wait till I tell everybody about Matt Dillon. Now he's lost his nerve. Get out of here, I said. Well, I don't want to shoot down a man that won't draw. Not today, anyway. But I'll be back, Marshal. Next week. Why don't you shoot him, Mr. Dillon? He ain't nothing but a big bluff. Chester. Yeah. You, you go on to breakfast, son. I'm, I'm going back to the office. What? Well, you told me... You heard what I said, to... didn't you? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Dillon. A little can full of coffee, Mr. Dillon. Oh, thanks, Chester. I'll oh, put it right here. What you doing, writing a letter? That's a telegram. Here, take this down to the depot, will you? Sure. I want it to go out right away. U.S. War Department? That's my resignation, Chester. What? I'm quitting right now. Well, you can't do that. I've done it. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. You're funning me. A man can quit a job, Chester. I've quit jobs before. Well, I know, but this is different. No, what's different about it? The government doesn't own me. Mr. Dillon. Yeah, what? You ain't doing this because of... because of what Joe Stanger said. What, that I lost my nerve? No, he's wrong about that. And he's wrong about my liking to kill men, too. Well, you never killed nobody unless you had and to. No, I don't have to. I'm through, Chester. I killed my last man. Well, I... I just don't know what to... Let me tell you something, Chester. I've hated this job since the day I took it. I never did have a taste for killing, and now they can find somebody who has, and he'll make a better marshal than I ever was. That ain't true. Now go send a telegram. And I'm going to be over at Delmonico's having breakfast. And with a good appetite for a change. There once was a lady named Mrs. White Who burned the kitchen light all night She was afraid, as folks all knows That someone would steal the Cheerios mm. <laughs> no need to be that careful, but Cheerios do have a way of disappearing. It's just that Cheerios taste so good. Cheerios aren't like other cereals. Cheerios are shaped like letter O's. That means they're toasted inside and out. So you get toasted oat flavor and golden crispness all the way through. Lots of nourishment, too, because a breakfast of Cheerios gives you the power protein of toasted oat cereal. Power protein that helps keep you feeling fit. Just try them once. Just once. Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat. If you know your oats, you'll really go for delicious, nutritious Cheerios. Washington, as usual, was pretty slow answering my telegram. A week later, I still hadn't had an answer, but I didn't care. I'd quit, and that was that. I even began to enjoy myself for a change. Like the day I finally took Kitty fishing. Matt! Hey, Matt, look! I got another one. <laughs> throw him back, Kitty. We got more than we can carry now. Oh, I will not throw him back. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over here in the shade. You've done enough fishing. Okay. Oh, look at him, Matt. Isn't he a beauty? Yeah, he is. He's bigger than any I caught. Why don't you throw him in the sack and then sit down here? Huh? Say, you're right. I didn't know we caught that many. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a fish fry tonight, huh? 
Well, we can feed half a dodge with all those. Uh, I doubt that. Did you ever see Chester go through a mess of fish? Well, the last time he starved himself a couple of days in advance. <laughs> Maybe we can kind of sneak up on him. Oh, no, no, no. He knows we're out here. Maybe you ought to go into the business, Matt. <sighs> oh, what business? Fishing. You could do it for a living. <laughs> I'm going to have to find something to do for a living, I guess. You know something, Matt? No, what? I think this is the first time I've ever seen you that you weren't wearing a gun. Yeah, I guess it is. I'm enjoying that, too. <laughs> oh, Matt. Look, what? there's somebody coming on horseback. Huh. Ah, that's Chester. Oh, yeah. Looks like he's in a hurry, too. Maybe he couldn't wait for that fish fry. Huh. Mr. Dillon? Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Mr. Dillon, Joe Stanger's in town. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, that doesn't matter to me, Chester. But you don't understand. Don't understand what? What I come to tell you. Stanger's at the Long Branch, and a while ago he had words with one of the girls there, and she slapped him, and he, he pulled out his gun, and he, he killed her. He what? Who was the girl, Chester? Kate Hawkins. Oh, no. That's who it was, Miss Kitty. Then the bartender tried to stop him, and Stanger shot him, too, and I hear he's going to die. I grabbed a horse off the hitch rail and come right out to tell you, you've got to stop him, Mr. Look, Dillon. Look, Chester, I'm not the marshal here anymore. I quit, remember? You mean you're going to let Joe Stanger walk around Dodge and shoot everybody that gets in his way, including women? I'm through killing. I told you that. Well, who's going to stop you, then? You're the only man around here that'll go up against him, and you know it. That may be true, but I'm still not going to do it. Wait, Mr. Dillon, wait wait a minute. I'd... I've been thinking a lot about all this lately, and there's something you've been overlooking. Oh? Men like Stanger and Brand, they they, they got to be stopped. I'd do it if I could, but I can't. I just ain't good enough. Most men ain't. But you are. It's kind of too bad for you that you are, that, that's the way it is, Mr. Dillon, and there's nothing you can do about it. Not now. It's too late. It's way too late. Give me your gun, Chester. Yes, sir. You, you want the holster? No, I'll carry it in my belt. Kitty, Chester will help you carry the fish back. Sure, Matt. Sure. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Lawrence Dobkin. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for the fifth of the most popular Gunsmoke shows. It is called Kitty Caught. Stay tuned now for five minutes of CBS News on the CBS Radio Network.